Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Kevin Small and today we have another episode of the Blue Box Conspiracy and if this is a Hideo Kojima game, a Silent Hill game or just a scam. And what we are seeing here in the background is the first game of Blue Box Game Studios which is the Bloodwater Curse and this was released just few months ago on Steam and Early Access and then was put offline and it was it was a very very weird thing. Uh, this video was uploaded by Masvas on YouTube. Uh, I will definitely put a link into the description that you can watch it yourself. But this video gave me a lot of pause and a lot of question marks because when you're first seeing this video here in the background you might think yeah that's wow that's that's cheap. Like wow yeah this this cannot be a Kojima game. Right? Like this looks pretty cheap, nearly like an asset flip. Uh, things are just not adding up. And yeah, this this doesn't look great. Well, I have watched this whole video already with my community, the whole 30 minutes. And as somebody who has been working in the gaming industry for over 10 years, first as a games journalist, then as a games consultant for multiple big companies, and then as a content creator, I have a lot of questions about this. And which actually led me to believe that there is more here. So first things first, which is very weird, is the voice acting. Yeah, there is voice acting in an early access alpha and it is good. Like, no, I do not kid you. The voice acting is actually professional. Like, let me actually let you listen in here for a second so Thanks, that you can mister. hear the voice. I say this over and over. I felt that negative energy of that ghost that was out there. Negative energy? Really? The man hung himself in there. I felt that, you know? You hear that? Like, that is something like, yes. Are the voices known? <laughs> no. I, I cannot say I've ever heard those voices. But they are professional. They have a lot of energy. They sound very professional, like they were definitely recorded in a studio-esque environment. Which just lets me to the belief, like, who would do that in an early access alpha for like a scam or an asset flip? Nobody. Like, believe me, I have seen asset flips. I have seen those super cheap early access games which just exist to make a quick buck. This one is not it. The same goes with the gameplay element. Yeah, it looks cheap, but that is exactly the problem here. Um, everything else is actually well thought out. They have this live stream thingy going on in the game. That's by the way the game, not me. I'm not live streaming this. This is like inside the game and like they have some very interesting gameplay elements, but then this game looks very rough. It looks very alpha, but deliberately. Let me tell you also a few things I have noticed. It's not just the gameplay. The next thing I have been noticing, and you sometimes see it popping up in the top underneath work in progress, there is developer commentary about the things which are going on right now and that they are fixing it, that they are looking for solutions on this. Like if you have problems, please report them. And it's like, sorry, I have seen a lot of games out there and nobody does that. Like this one right here. This is, okay, you might say, okay, this is this is well, standard, right? No, they're putting this everywhere. When Whenever something is showing up, whenever something is happening in this game, they are basically popping this information and be like, hey, this is still early access. We are working on this particular animation right now, which will be look much, much better later on in early access. And it's like, I'm sorry, who in an early access scam is putting that in there like even good studios who have a lot of um who have a lot of like early access games and then release them and they were super successful even they don't do this this is a very i don't want to see japanese thing but a very much like thing i would have expected from kojima productions and how kojima likes to do stuff like always very formal like trying to be very supportive and being like hey, yeah we know this doesn't look great but please 
keep in mind this is just early access. Like this is the first thing. Yeah, you, you see it right here. Like it always pops up like every few minutes to basically explain to you what the hell is going on. And really, nobody who does like an early access scam or does an asset flipper scam is actually doing this. Then you can see the live chat also happening at the same time. It's like, wow, they, they put a lot of work into this. And it's just weird. Then the next thing I noticed, and maybe you have already noticed this now that they move, this is weird. Like apparently this was played by Mazavs or Mazavs? I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. I'm, I'm truly sorry about that. But who is playing this? Like, serious question, who is playing this? This is not how somebody would move who is actually doing Let's Plays. Somebody who has done a lot, who is watching a lot of Let's Plays on live streams, on YouTube. This is not how you move around. I was first thinking, okay, he's playing this with a controller. He is not. He's playing this with mouse and keyboard. <laughs> Again, this is not how you play it, especially if you are playing this the first time. This is a presentation gameplay, and some of the developers are actually playing this. This is presentation. Like, they are staying on the path, they're not trying to look around, they are really just trying to move as slowly as possible, right? And then they are also doing something which I have been realizing no content creator would do, is... They're showing bugs in a way you wouldn't do. So when you are a content creator, they are basically like multiple ways how you can react to bugs. You can make fun of it. You try to showcase them and then make them look ex absolutely hilarious or try even to push them further to maybe break the game and have a laugh out of it. Or what you are trying to do is you are trying to look away. You are trying to ignore it and be like, yeah, let's not make the game look bad, right? There are multiple ways how you can absolutely handle this. The person who is playing this are showcasing the bugs, but in a manner of, look, there's a bug. This must mean this is early access alpha by a small indie studio. Like, it is a showcase of bugs, which you wouldn't do as a content creator. It, like, it is so, so weird to watch this whole 30 minutes of the gameplay and you should definitely do it because there's so many things where you just realize this is something else like you know how people sometimes try to polish up that turd and make it look golden and be like look this is a gold piece no it's a turd piece painted golden this, on the other hand, looks more like a diamond they try to rough up and just throw some dirt at it to make it dirty. To make it look like, oh, this is not a diamond in the making. And I have seen this kind of before. Like, I have seen developers working. Especially when I worked as a gaming consultant, I have seen something like this. Where, the, where you can really see that there is a developer who knows game development for decades, who has been working in the industry for years, and there is a certain amount of quality and knowledge to it. And you can see it in this game. There's a lot of moments where you think, man, that's some high quality. But then they throw something in the mix to just make it look rough and unfinished. And I think that's exactly what the developers try to do here. Like, again, there's, there's so much to unpack in this, which makes me really believe there's more to this game than, you know, just an early access scam. But that is not the only thing which happened. In the last 24 hours, there was a lot of other stuff. So people are still believing that this is just a scam of a person. And there are a few reasons to believe that. Like, I've seen people like, no, this must be legit because it's on the PlayStation blog and it's on the official PlayStation YouTube channel, their new game abandoned. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I can see why you think that. But getting on that blog and especially getting on the 
Sony YouTube channel, on the PlayStation YouTube channel, is pretty easy, unfortunately. You, you would have thought that this is not the case because Sony, because PlayStation, no it is. Like there's a good chunk of games which turned out to be just shared, like absolute scams and ending up on that YouTube channel, ending up on the PlayStation blog and then ending up in the PlayStation store. Like it seems like Sony is very easygoing when it comes to inviting developers to the PlayStation world. So I can totally understand why people believe that, yeah, this this makes sense. And yes, it does. But what doesn't make sense is, why are more people in on this? Like the first one is Jeff Keighley. No, no matter what you think about Jeff Keighley here, but this man has a reputation. He has built some big shows. Well-known and well-beloved by a lot of people. Again, a lot of reputation on the line. And he is in on this. He is supporting Hassan. He will showcase his stuff. He is trying to work this out with Hassan. And it's like, what? Really? What? Why would you do that, Jeff? I am pretty sure you are not... Like, Hassan is not the first indie developer who tried to do exactly that with you. Why is it exactly Hassan... You want to, like, support like this. This is a bit fishy. And then the next thing is now journalists from big uh, video game websites like GameSpot, IGN and whatnot, they already had the chance now to have a phone call with Hassan and talk about it. And they're talking about it in a deliberate way weird, non-saying way, but they're like, yeah, yeah, Hassan, <laughs> such a good guy. Hassan is real, man. I love Hassan. <laughs> he has such great ideas. I really, really love what Hassan is doing here. Oh, what's the game about? Oh, you will see. It's it's great. It's great. Yes. Oh, by the way, it's totally not what you believe it is. It's like, what? What? How did you change from, yeah, I totally believe that something is up to Hassan? <laughs> I've talked to Hassan. He is great. I was like, what? That's odd. And also, like, how they how they paraphrase all of this is very deliberate and weird. So, yeah, that is that is the first thing which is still making me weird out. And the next thing is, Hassan also loves to conduct those interviews at 3 a.m. in the morning in the Netherlands. Don't get me wrong, I'm a night owl. I'm working at night. I'm more the, the late night working shift guy than I'm a morning guy. But it's kind of weird that Hassan is really doing all those things at night. He is active on Twitter at night. He is literally working at night. But when you think about the time in Japan which is seven hours ahead of the Netherlands, then it would actually be early in the morning for him. Like when he had the interview at 3 a.m. in the morning in the Netherlands, it is 10 a.m. in the morning in Japan. So it's like, yeah, that makes a little bit more sense, doesn't it? It's, it's super weird. And of course, he only did phone calls with the people. They never saw his face. They never really, like know who he is they just know that the person they just had a phone call with was a son and it's like okay well i can say hey folks i'm hassan right <laughs> how, how do you prove me otherwise you cannot see my face you cannot take a picture and be like ah this is how hassan looks right so it's a it's a bit weird and i have i have a theory on this and this is just my personal theory, but I've also posted it on Twitter and uh, Reddit, not Twitter, Reddit, and it actually got some traction. So let me tell you my theory about all of this. This is something Kojima started in 2015. Now you might say, we already talked about this. Kojima is not planning ahead this much. And in 2015, you were still working with Konami. This makes no sense. True. But what if this wasn't really planned for 
this occasion? What if this was actually planned for 2015 when we all knew that Silent Hills was coming? What if this was all made up for Silent Hills? And as we know, Silent Hills was planned to be, well, a Silent Hill with multiple dimensions because Silent Hills, right? Like we will have multiple dimensions, multiple personalities, and maybe this is exactly what Kojima is trying to do here, that Hassan is just another dimension of Hideo Kojima. Like we have Hideo Kojima in our world, a successful developer who has a lot of like successful games under his belt, who has a lot of reputation, has a fan base, and everyone is looking forward to the next game and who has that traction. And then in another universe, we would have Hassan, which names are also like similar to Hideo Kojima, and that Hassan is anything but that. He is more like a con artist. He has tried to build up a studio. He had tried to do multiple games, failed on that. He, he dreams big. He has big ideas, but in the end, no, nobody ever believed him. Nobody ever gave him the chance other than Kojima. So maybe this was actually really planned for Silent Hills, but now Kojima just came back to it and use it for their new game, whatever they will announce. That is at least what I believe. But yeah, it's very, it's just weird. Like, again, this dude showed up in 2015 and since then, we have never really heard of him ever again. And now in 2021, out of nowhere, he's like, yeah, I am here. Like, I have this big grand plan. And I was like, really? Like, again, there's, there's too many question marks here. Like, there's definitely something going on. If it is a scam, maybe. I don't know. Could be, in the end. If it is a new Kojima game, yeah, chances are there. Is it the new Silent Hill? That I do not know. But could be. Yeah. Chance, like, you can definitely read all the hints as, as you might like. And I think this is the interesting part about this conspiracy, that there's actually a lot of reason to believe that this is made up. But it could also be real. And Kojima has said it before, like, he really wants to push game announcements to the next level. Like, just listen to his interviews, where he said, yeah, game announcement became stale. Game announcements became boring and predictable. And he really, really wants to fresh that up. And he tried that with PT back in the day. And, well, they had to make it deliberately look bad but it still didn't work out. It was still too good looking. And maybe now he is trying this. Like there, there's a lot of chances that that might be the case. So we will see, of course, how this goes. I will keep it posted as always. But I hope we are getting some more information today. Um, Hassan has promised to give screenshots to Jeff Keighley today. Um, not really sure what we are getting. We will probably get some really bad looking screenshots. Like some really, really bad looking screenshots. And you know what? Should Jeff Keighley decide to post those screenshots? I'm, I'm even more convinced that something is up. Because if Jeff Keighley is getting those screens and is not saying anything besides of, hey, Hassan has delivered, here are the screenshots, and they look absolutely bad, then I'm more convinced that Jeff Keighley is totally in on this, that something is going on here, because Jeff Keighley wouldn't just post bad-looking screenshots. Like, he would probably say something like, hey, folks, Hassan sent these pictures to me. I think it should be clear by now, like, this is a scam. Um, I will not support this in any shape or form anymore. I'm totally sorry about this. Here are the screenshots you posted me just as a proof, but I'm done with this bullshit. I'm out. If he doesn't do that, yeah, something is up. <laughs> something is up.
something is really up. Uh, but with that said, we are at the end of the video. So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if on your way out, you might click on the like button. If you, of course, didn't like this video, the dislike button is right next to it. And if you're also new to the channel, you want to see more gaming news, gameplay tips, tricks, early access to games, sometimes weeks before they come out, then you might want to consider to subscribe to the channel. I would definitely appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you see you next time. Stay safe.